Hey guys, Joe here at JP Details with the biggest detail in the unit so far which involved a solid 70.5 hours of labour on this 2015 Audi RS5. What exactly did this 70 plus hour detail involve? Well stay tuned to find out each individual stage. Day 1 began at 9am shortly after the vehicle was dropped off and once I had arrived back from dropping the customer off at the train station. I began the biggest detail to date with tackling the rather grubby engine bay first which did begin with an initial jet wash to remove the loose stuff. My usual cleaning products and tools were used which is the Valet Pro All Purpose Cleaner diluted 5 to 1, a Swiss Fax Detail Brush, an Easy Detail Go Brush, a Martin Cox Narrow Brush and a small McGuire Scrubbing Brush. I did spend quite a bit of time on the engine bay attending to each area and catering for all of the different types of materials. When I felt that the engine bay had been sufficiently agitated, it was all rinsed off with the jet watch. If you would like to watch a complete engine bay detailing guide step by step, then please visit my other uploads as I have covered this process in great detail more than once. The engine bay took around one hour to initially clean and when this had been done I began with the next task which is a full decontamination of the wheels and a deep clean for the arches. Surprisingly enough due to the arches being absolutely filthy and the fact that they were mainly of a fabric material this was a rather time consuming task to perform. The wheels were removed one by one and I worked on each of the four sections one at a time. The arches were given one hell of a thorough pre-rinse to remove as much of the dirt and grime that was possible, before hitting the arch with a strong dilution of all-purpose cleaner and then agitating with various wheel brushes. I did find that the tougher bristled brush, namely the tough shine tyre brush, did the best job of cleaning the fabric arch liners. The ordinary wheel brush was good for the tighter areas such as around the suspension and the easy detail go brush and the Martin Cox narrow brushes were good for reaching between the various springs, pipes, shafts and random gaps and crevices. The process for the arches involved the pre-rinse, agitation with a strong APC and various brushes, rinse again, agitate with APC and various brushes for a second time and then a final thorough pressure rinse. This time consuming and physically demanding task was a good stage to get out of the way early on. The wheels themselves were initially rinsed to knock off the loose stuff before being hit with the iron fallout remover on two separate occasions. Each time I would agitate the product using my Swiss Fax detail brush and with the benefit of having the wheels off the car meant that I was able to fully decontaminate the inner barrels and behind the spokes.
after the iron fallout remover stage which made a world of difference to the RS5 summer set of wheels, the tar deposits were removed which did require two separate hits of the tar and glue remover chemical. The microfiber towel was used to thoroughly wipe over the surface and again if you do want to watch a full on wheel off detailing guide then please visit my other uploads and why not subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and give the like button a tickle whilst you're at it. With the engine bay arches and wheels taken care of, the next task on the never ending list of things to do is to deep clean the convertible roof. Like all detailing stages this begun with an initial pre-rinse. The jet wash was held at a respectable distance away from the fabric material as to not cause any damage to the mediocre delicate surface. After the pre-rinse I applied a 10 to 1 dilution of all purpose cleaner to clean the entire fabric hood and began the agitation process with a Sonax upholstery brush. Again like most things detailing related you need to take your time. I did notice that with this convertible roof it did take a few moments for each section to begin turning slightly green as the mossy or algae contamination was drawn out from deep inside the material. If I'd rushed this process and the arches, wheels and the engine base stage then they'd still be dirty afterwards which isn't what detailing is all about. I took my time as I made my way around the fabric roof and reapplied the product when required. When the agitation stage had been completed to meet my own satisfaction the hood was thoroughly rinsed off whilst keeping the jet wash at a respectable distance. Onto the next stage which is finally going to see us attending to the bodywork which is initiated with a thorough pressure rinse. This is going to knock off the loose stuff before we make any direct contact with the paintwork. Please note that my primary jet wash, the Kranzel K7 had recently burst an o-ring so I wasn't able to use it. I'm currently using a Nilfisk D140 which is my secondary machine but I don't have a snow foam attachment. Thank you. 
I opted to supplement the snow foam stage with a hand applied strong dilution of all purpose cleaner stage which will be acting as the pre-wash. This is going to do the same role as the snow foam would which is to loosen up the more stubborn dirt and road grab, but it isn't quite as satisfying to watch. After feeling like Popeye and when the exterior was sufficiently dosed in the pre-wash, I took a Swiss Fax detail brush and cleaned the harder to get to areas. Just remember it is all in the details and every effort will show in the final result. After all nooks and crannies have been dealt with, the exterior was rinsed under pressure before moving to the two bucket hand wash. With the daylight drawing in and the first day coming to a close, I used a Sam's Detailing wash mitt and the Sam's Detailing shampoo to offer the RS5 a good initial scrub down. A secondary wash mitt was used for the lowest areas as to not heavily contaminate my primary wash mitts. I simply spent the time required to get the RS5 respectively clean before rinsing it all off in the near darkness. The first day came to an end shortly after this washing stage as due to the British winter time I completely run out of daylight by 5pm. Day 1 was an 8 hour labour intensive day from 9am till 5pm and did turn out to be very productive. The RS5 was parked up for the evening before returning the next day. Day 2 began at 9am and saw the start of the decontamination stages for the exterior. The paintwork was wiped down with tar and glue remover to remove those nasty black blobs of road tar. Most areas require two hits of the product in order to remove the build-up of rotar contamination and when this stage was complete, the exterior was pressure rinsed back down. The secondary decontamination stage for the exterior was to give it the iron fallout treatment, so with my double action trigger spray and one litre of the product, I once again turned into Popeye and got the entire exterior covered. 
The product was given as long as possible to dwell which due to this cold and damp winter's morning turned out to be around 10 minutes and shortly afterwards it was all pressure rinsed off. At this rinsing stage I opted to clean the mediocre soil, door and boot shuts and seals and the filler cap area, starting with a pressure rinse to remove the loose stuff whilst not getting the interior soaking wet. I followed the rinsing stage with a manual cleaning stage using the Swissfax detail brush and APC. In all honesty this is one of my favourite parts about the detailing decontamination stages because I mean what Valeter ever does this. This is one of those stages that begin to set you apart from your average car washer. The exterior was given another rinse down to remove the APC soapy suds and the next task, which is completely unheard of by a valeter, is called the clay bar stage. This little piece of putty type material when gently wiped over the paintwork multiple times whilst using a detail spray is going to remove all traces of any final bonded contamination. This stage is carried out with military like precision as we need to get the car ultimately clean before further work commences. The RS5 was brought inside the unit for blow drying after being swapped round with the Focus and after I constructed the temporary new shelter. The Gravitas 4.2 horsepower heated blower which can be picked up for a decent price makes effortless work of completely drying the exterior. There will be no drips from the gaps and crevices if done correctly which is going to be important when completing the forthcoming stages. Another task I wanted to tick off the to-do list early on was the complete clean for the interior. I tend to tackle each quarter of the interior as I make my way around which usually starts with giving all areas of the first quarter i.e. the driver's area an initial vacuum and dust in order to remove the most debris. This is then followed with an APC and detail brush stage which once again I will only concentrate on this first section to begin with. Starting with the centre console and steering wheel before moving to the dashboard, door card and the leather seat. Due to gravity I do tend to work my way down, starting with the high rub sections first. It's normally a case of only doing what's necessary, which always seems to be time consuming no matter what stage you are at in the detail. The last area to clean for this section of the interior is the driver's side footing area and once again I'll tackle this with APC, a Swissfax detail brush and for the carpets the Sonax upholstery brush. 
All areas on the interior are going to be protected with Geotechnic products, so just like the exterior, we also need the interior spotless. The floor mats were removed to allow a deeper cleaning process for the carpet and also a deeper cleaning process for the mats. They have already been vacuumed to remove the loose bits of debris and are now being cleaned with upholstery cleaner. A thorough agitation for the mats is going to break up the many dirt particles that are no doubt embedded into the fabric, which is going to work wonders. The mats were then given a thorough sink to with the jet wash to draw out all of the mud and grime from deep inside the fabric's pile. The mats were then brought inside for a vacuum extraction to once again make sure that all dirt is removed and to help with the drying out process. This saw the end of day 2 which again ran from 9am till 5pm so a further 8 hours of physically demanding and labour intensive work. Day 3 started with protecting all leather surfaces with their first coat of Geotanic L1 Leather Guard and I also protected the carpet with Geotanic i5 Smart Fabric. I cleaned around the convertible roof shutting mechanism which I don't think had been cleaned in quite a while, I dressed all the interior plastics with auto finesse spritz and although it doesn't seem like much work, it still took me 4 hours. I then got stuck in with correcting the paintwork and by the time I reached 4pm I compounded the whole front and rear end. I didn't opt to record any footage of me doing this as there was plenty of compounding footage to be seen in the following day. A further 7 hours of work was carried out on day 3 and yet more progress to be seen. Day 4 started at 9am once again and I began the day with protecting the floor mats with G-Technic i5 Smart Fabric. I then applied the second coat of Geotechnic L1 Leather Guard to all leather surfaces and also cleaned the inside of the windows. With the interior thankfully finished, which means I can close its doors and concentrate my efforts into correcting the panther black paintwork, with the time I had left available, my objective was to finish the compounding stage and I have both sides of the car left to attend to. The swall damage across the entire car was very obvious and with it being black left much to the imagination. The RS5's paintwork wasn't hard or difficult to correct, I'd say it's around medium in hardness, but it did have various deeper defects across the paintwork. I wanted to remove around 98% of the defects that were present, which also meant diminishing down those heavier defects so they'd be less noticeable. The Rupes LHR15 machine polisher, a FlexiPads microfiber cutting disc and the Rupes Green Medium compound worked absolutely wonders for the paintwork. Although it did require a gentle hand towards the end of the compounding cycle to help reduce the amount of haziness and hologramming that was being left behind. Haziness and hologramming is normal when carrying out a compounding stage, but you do need to make sure that you can fully refine the paintwork back to a true gloss finish with your following polishing stage, when carrying out a two-stage minor paint correction. I managed to finish the initial compounding stage for both sides of the car, which finished off the complete initial compound for the entire car, and I called it a day at 3.30pm so I could get back home to edit a YouTube video. A further 6.5 hours of work went into the car on day 4 and yet again more progress had been achieved.
Day 5 started at 9am with the task of taking the wheels off to send them off for an OEM refurb. The RS5 was jacked up, put on axle stands and the wheels were taken off. I personally dropped the wheels off at JP Alloys in Canuck and I must say, unlike the last wheel refurb video, I did have a good feeling about this highly reputable company. Their facilities are quite simply astonishing with all of the scissor lifts in symmetrical positioning and the unit's clean appearance, so I headed back to my unit with high hopes. My first task when getting back was to inspect my correction work and to mark any areas that I felt could be further improved. I marked various areas with detailers tape and set about giving these isolated sections a bit more compounding. Most of these were slightly heavier marks or scruffs or even scratches and they did require quite a bit more time with the machine polisher to diminish to a point where they'd be much less noticeable. I set up the Shinemate mini rotary with the extendable intricate area polishing attachment and attended to the rather niggly nooks and crannies. This tool is absolutely exceptional in terms of opening up the door to correcting parts of the paintwork that would otherwise be inaccessible. I'm using a compounding foam attachment on the mini rotary in conjunction with the Rupes Green Medium compound and I do intend to follow this compounding stage with a softer refining stage. The areas that I'm now attending to are just as swirled up as the rest of the paintwork was so they did take quite a bit of compounding to correct. With all intricate areas compounded I began refining the paintwork. A white Rupes Ultra Soft finishing pad and the white Rupes Ultra Fine finishing polish worked absolutely wonders in refining the Panther Black paintwork. I managed to refine the whole front end and called it a day at 3.30pm to finish off that YouTube video with a further 6.5 hours of work and a nice bit of progress achieved. At the start of day 6 I had the objective of completing the entire refining process and to get the arches and brake calipers protected. I made a start at 8am with refining the paintwork using the same type of ultra fine finishing pad and the white Rupes ultra fine finishing polish. I spent the time required on the RS5's paintwork and had it back to a deep gloss finish without any issues. I utilised the Rupes LHR15 Bigfoot for the larger and medium sized sections, the Rupes Mini Bigfoot for the smaller areas and the Shinemate Mini Rotary for the real intricate pieces. I completed the entire refining process and finished each polishing cycle on a slightly slower speed, which was around 4.5 compared to the initial passes being on speed setting 6. By doing a slightly slower finishing pass after the bulk of the refining simply meant that there would be little to no chance of any holograms or lighter spots being left behind. After I was satisfied that all refining had been done to get this car to a show winning standard, I moved my attention to finishing the final prep work for the arches. I detailed the arches and made sure that there were no tar deposits on the painted inner arch lips and also polished the brake calipers by hand. The fabric arch liners were given a thorough vacuum using all three of the George pneumatic vacuum attachments which did work wonders for removing the last bits of entwined fitting debris. I'm not going to lie, vacuuming the fabric arch liners was tiring as it took quite a bit of doing and the angles that you have to work with aren't natural. Regardless I got the arches ready for protecting which will be done on the following day at the same time as the convertible roof. Day 6 finished at 7pm which in total was 11 hours of labour mainly due to the fabric arch liners taking quite a bit of time to get back to a superbly clean condition. On this day I also polished the door and boot shuts and sills with the Shinemate mini rotary but I didn't capture any footage. Day 7 started at 8am with an initial dust down for the paintwork and a vacuum and delinting process for the convertible roof. I applied G-Technic i5 smart fabric to all wheel arches and massaged it in with my hands. If you want a full on G-Technic i5 smart fabric guide then please watch the recent ridiculously obsessive deep interior detail video to find out. With the convertible roof now also fully prepared for the G-Technic i5 smart fabric, I went ahead and applied the product using the correct technique. 
thoroughly saturate the fabric and then work in with your hand. With correct application, this product will last for three years, so I did make sure that I didn't skimp out on this rather expensive product. The hood was taped off from the nearby sections to avoid staining on the immediate areas, but I certainly didn't wait around whilst completing this entire process. The fabric guard does dry pretty quickly and it will stain any type of hard surface if not removed in good time. The tape was removed, the nearby paintwork and windows were wiped down with IPA to remove a bit of the i5 product mist and I then gave the fabric hood a final wipe over with my hand to make sure that all of the product had been thoroughly worked in. I then set about giving the rest of the paintwork an IPA wipe down, followed with a close inspection in the pitch black darkness. The IPA has now removed all polish oils and residue from the paintwork which is going to allow us to be able to see its true condition. Considering the fact that we will be ceramic coating this finish in for the next 5 years, conducting this final inspection in the darkness whilst only using my scan grip so much too, is going to allow my eyes to solely focus on one particular area at a time. In result, if there are any defects left over, I'll find them now. I did find a few areas that hadn't quite been refined to their fullest, so I once again marked these isolated areas with detailless tape and then went back in with the machine polisher. On day 7 I also managed to apply the G-Tanic glass coating to the windows and windscreen, polished the exhaust tips and cleaned all door, boot and bonnet shuts and sills, with Sam's detailing spray wax. Day 7 finished at 3pm so a further 7 hours of work and the RS5's paintwork is now ready for one of the biggest tasks which is the 3 layer ceramic coating application. Day 8 began at 9am with applying the first layer of ceramic which is G-Technic Crystal Serum Light. I applied the coating to one panel at a time and then removed the excess product using the 2 towel technique. This first towel removes the majority of the excess product and makes sure that all areas of your one panel have been adequately coated and then the second towel will remove all final traces. I applied the first layer of CSL to the entire exterior and then ceramic coated one of the wheels. The CSL black treatment requires a minimum of 3 hours before applying the next layer and there's 3 layers in total and with each layer taking roughly 2.5 hours to do. I did find myself with 30 minutes spare which was perfect for ceramic coating one of the winter wheels at a time. This is the RS5's winter set and have already been fully decontaminated with one of them currently at the wheel refurber alongside the summer set. I wiped the wheels down with IPA as a last step preparation stage and then applied the G-Tenic C5 wheel armour. Using the same two towel technique as the bodywork the excess product was removed and the wheel was now looking mighty fine. I continued with this method on the next layer of ceramic coating called G-Tenic XOV4. Apply to the vehicle, remove with the two tile technique, inspection of my results and when the first layer of XOV4 was finished, I then ceramic coated the second winter wheel whilst the paintwork had its minimum of 3 hours curing time. This was carried on until all three coats of ceramic had been applied to the paintwork and when all three of the winter wheels had been coated. I finished the ceramic coating bonanza with coating the previously polished and prepped brake calipers to finish off this ceramic filled day with nothing but an achy back and legs. Day 8 finished at 3pm so a further 7 hours of work.
At the start of day 9 at 9am I headed over to JP Alloys in Cannock to collect the freshly refurbished summer set of wheels and also that one winter wheel. I got them safely back to the unit for ceramic coating and after that job was finished I dressed all 8 tyres in one go which was pretty fun to do. I dressed the minimal plastic trim on the RS5 and the rubber seals with lithium trim serum and Swiss Vax seal feed. I cleaned the inside of the rear window, gave the interior a light dust and vacuum and then put the winter wheels back on and lowered the car down. The wheel bolts were torqued up to their correct torque setting and I set about a final inspection whilst doing a bit of tooth pickery. The vehicle was given a final dust down before the vehicle was collected. Day 9 finished at 6.30pm so a further 9.5 hours of labour. In total the RS5 received 70.5 hours of solid work and although it isn't the biggest of transformations and vehicle condition that I've had in the unit, it's been the best conditioned vehicle to leave, apart from the brand new ones. The RS5 has had every single surface either enhanced, corrected and protected without a time restricting budget. I must admit that this car has so far been one of the most enjoyable ones to detail, the paintwork responded very well to the machine polishing process and generally all areas reacted very well to whatever I was doing with them. The RS5 is an awesome car and I now officially want a convertible for the summer. The owner picked the car up the following day and was given good advice in terms of how to keep the car looking this way for years to come. As always thank you for watching, please like and subscribe for plenty more videos, feel free to follow me on Facebook and Instagram, just search JP Details and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.